This is Elijah. Hello, Elijah. It's nice to see you. Blessings there are many to you. that want to speak today. There are many that want to bring their information from their parts of the galaxy, from their parts of understanding and wisdom. But today, I think what is needed is some balance. I believe that there are many people out there feeling not part of the positive movement, although they are moving forward in positivity. They, they cannot feel it or connect to it in a way that makes them feel vital or makes them feel important about it. And you will have those out there in the world that will tell you, you're not important. All these people telling you that you're important and there that you have a mission and you or that you are have some kind of uh, thing to do for the future. They're just they don't know what they're talking about. Can't you see you're just a normal person doing your normal life, doing all the things that you've always done? But yet you might be aware of a few extra things, aliens and spirits. But you're nobody. Don't let them tell you that. This day and age, there is so much deception. And the deception is more about telling you what not to be doing than to tell you what you should be doing. Saying that things are not working when they should be telling you how to work it. Positivity is that. It is the way to succeed even though things do not look like they can possibly succeed. Bringing out positivity in places where you do not see positivity. Learning to bring positivity to the darkness or to places where none has been seen before. Bringing positive thoughts and energies to relationships that do not seem like they can possibly work. You see, there are so many messages out there that says it doesn't work. But understand this. Your belief system is such that when you grab on to the positivity and know that it works, such as the, the law of attraction and things of positivity and God's love, when you hold on to these things, when you grab on to the positivities that you know are there and use them and do not doubt them, they become something else. They become reality. They become part of things that you never could possibly imagine could be. They become part of your person they become part of your example they become part of the things that you can use to send out into the world to light some fires listen to me a lot of people will say that's not elijah they will look at and listen to what I have to say and say, Elijah wouldn't say that. Elijah would do this. Elijah would do that. But they don't know me. They don't know who I am. I am looking into the world and trying to bring up the light as high as I can bring it trying to start fires in places where there is no light or is no fire, trying to bring positivity to places that are forced to look at only the negative things. Are you in a place where you are 
forced into a negative thought process? If that is the case, you need to escape now. You need to find some positive people, some positive thoughts, and some positive actions, and move away from that. There are many jobs out there that are so negatively charged that you, when you get home from your workplace, you can hardly keep your eyes open. You can hardly speak to anyone in a social way, but you are destroyed by those atmospheres. Bring yourself out of that. It is time. Is making a few dollars more important than losing sight of all that is important in your life that will bring you joy and happiness. The people around you who love you, disconnecting because of negativity, disconnecting because this place sucks out all your energies and makes you fit into a mold that you should not be in. I know that some of you have already noticed that and have moved away and I and I congratulate you for moving into a different realm. And you're saying, well, this realm is not that much better because I'm not making money. And so it seems like things are about the same, but you must bring the positivity to you. You must understand that there is nothing keeping positivity away from you except your belief that it is being kept away. Believe in yourself and in the power of God and in the power of eternity that these things can be part of who you are. There are people around you that you are watching and seeing that are struggling because they cannot seem to bring that positivity in. There is something there that's keeping the positivity from their belief system, from keeping the positivity from becoming part of who they are, and they are totally confounded. Let me speak to them in their heart and tell them this. I understand where you are at. Everyone on the face of the earth has been in that place one time or another. It is not that you are alone feeling that way, but you are not to feel hopeless, not to feel that there is no way out because there is always a way out. And that is why some children take their lives and some adults take their lives. They see no more light at the end of the tunnel. They see no more reason to live. They see no more purpose. And that is deception. They have been deceived into believing that there is nothing for them and nobody cares and there is no light at the tunnel and that God has forsaken them. All these things are deception. Because if you are looking this way straight ahead and you cannot see any light, then you need to start turning around and looking other places because there is not just one direction to move. There are many. Let me tell you this. I would like to bring hope into your life, prosperity, and all things that are positive. And you say, oh, perhaps that's not what God put me here for. Perhaps I'm made to suffer. But if you are made to suffer, 
God still puts a joy into those that are suffering for His will. You will be joyful in your suffering, not miserable. God puts joy in those that He is working with. And if he needs to bring you through some hard times, there will still be a joy there somewhere that there is hope, that there is life. There is an ending to the problem. There is an ending, a solution coming. And so many of you cannot see it. And I would love to encourage you that there is one for every single person there. And even though my words may fall on some deaf ears, there will be some that will plant this seed of hope and let it grow. Let it be. Let it find the truth. Is there any questions? Yes, there's several questions, and the first person to go will be uh, uh, Lila. Lila, sorry, Lila. 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 Hi, Elijah. Who is Lila? I have a few questions. I can. Oh, it is Lila. Yeah, I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> go ahead. Can you hear um, I can can't you hear, hear you, though. You're very, very soft. Now? That's better. Okay. So I have a few questions, very short. And to the point, do I have connection to the crystal scopes? Yes. What is it? That is for you to learn as you live your life. In this life? <laughs> this life and the next. Oh your connection God. to the skulls will come later in this life, but be very prominent in the next. Right, that's what I feel. That's rather next. Uh, the second question is, who is, in the, who is the closest being or, uh, to me, around me, at this point? The closest being is Krishna to you. Krishna? Ganesh, Krishna, yes. and all those that are in that family. Yes, they are. That's wonderful. So, I was... Uh, I was meditating or uh, like healing I do healing or uh, regular and I was inviting my reptilian uh, friends for healing and also my children and I would like to know if you could see if they if they appear in my meditation because at this point I'm not aware they appear when you believe they appear because okay. they are part of who you are and you are attached to them by love and light. And when they appear, you can feel them. Okay, well, then, then appear. This is now the, the last question. I am a little worried about the Vatican. War means I hope they are going to change the energy to better. Do you see energetically that the people of Vatican, the priesthood, do open up and progress? For the new world and new the future. people of who vatican in rome the vatican yes the catholic church yes well they're huge do, do i see them opening up yes i see a great change coming for the church and i see that they they are going to change how they think about many things and they are going to change their focus because they need to do so. Wow. That will be that will be wonderful. And we really need them to change because there are great negative force in this world, and that has to be transformed. So I'm really, really as happy. a whole. Yes. As an organization, they are very negative. Some of the individuals there within the organization are very positive. Yes. As with every organization. However, they need to change as a whole. Absolutely. They need to, you see this new Pope 
has a different attitude than any of the others in recent years, has a more liberal thought process in many ways, but he is frowned upon by the establishment, the organization of the church, because they are conservative and they want what they want and they want to be able to control the people with what they ha have intact and what they have set up but he is not following all those rules but he must maintain some of them otherwise he will be in danger of losing his life but there is change coming and I cannot tell you exactly what that will be or look like, but it will be drastic and there will be a huge change at the end of his time. Is that everything then? Um, yes. Lila, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, we also now have um, Omran. As, uh, to ask a oh, question. Oh. Yes, my friend. I cannot hear him. I don't hear him either. Omran, are you there? Speak. <laughs> okay, can, can you speak or not? Okay, let me, let me try to, un let me try to unmute him. Maybe he's muted. One, one second, let me just see if I can unmute him and, and see. Oh, answer. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it? Perfect. I okay. Go ahead. I can hear you now. Yes. yes, you can hear me now. Hello, Elijah. Greetings. I have. I also have a question regarding this crystal skulls. I don't know if that is something you can answer about. I am aware of them, yes. Well, my question is that I know that I was the creator of some of them. In, in the time of Atlantis, Lemuria, and those times. So will I, will I be working with them in this lifetime? It or is what will I be Let doing? me tell you about the crystal skulls that you made. They did not take just a few minutes to make, but years. They are the product of many years of hard work and many years of energy manipulation. Do you understand that? Yes. So there you, will be. Were, you have worked with two of the skulls in the Atlantean era. It took you many years, but you were a great wizard in that sense that you could handle the energies and bring the information to the skulls that were necessary from the entities that you were working with to create them. Now, you have future lives with the skulls and perhaps even in this life, you will be reintroduced to at least one of them. Have you been introduced yet? I have. I have only been uh, receiving contact from the one in Br British M Museum. Yes. And that is the one who is very closely connected with me. I don't know if that is the one I was. Yes, that is the one that will speak to you. It was. And, um, and because it is one that you have made. Yes, but I, but I can't have it with me right now. I, I, I don't think no, that would... it cannot be with you. Not in this realm. Yes. What will happen? What will happen if I go to it physically and touch it and look into its eyes? Oh, you will definitely communicate. You will feel the energy and you will know the beings. You will see those who have given you the instructions and you will know exactly which skull it is in number. Okay, oh, very good. Very good. Um, is it also like that, that when, when someone makes the skull, then they also connect all of their consciousness with the skull, so it is actually partially their energy in some way, 
because oh, they connect of course. minds together. You are eternally connected to the skull that you made and to the collaboration that they are representing. Uh, very good. Very good. And my last question is, I had a dream a few, like five days ago, I think it was, but it was not an ordinary dream. It was very vivid, and when I woke up, it felt like I was astral projecting the feeling of it afterwards. And in the dream, I was, um, I was in underground base, and I was with a few others who were very secretive, and, and we were covering our heads with, and, and such. Then we were waiting for around, I think it was around 50 soldiers, um, much like humans, to enter the room. And the next that happened was that these soldiers had, had um, electric guns with them, weapons. And then they, I was, the other ones of my friends just went on to go outside. And then I was, suddenly I just uh, took off my whatever um, thing that was covering my head. And I was starting to sing in angelic language, like a hymn for them that they were, they were going to die, all of them. I don't know if I was part of that act, but I was, I just completely this, changed. It was like time this and is a dream and that there are, This dream is being had by more than just yourself. Very similar kinds of dreams are being experienced by many people around your planet. It is about an event that will come in the future. And it is about the resurrection of the planet in some senses. But it is a future event that is not to happen soon, but you will be there to be a part of it. Okay. So it was not some kind of... Um, it was symbolic, mm -hmm. of course. I thought it but was astral. There were parts of it that were also real. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. You it are was right. just um, surprising that that so many would die in just in an instant. It is a surprise, but if you look into the future and look into the Book of Revelations, there are some truths that are there that are revealed that many will die suddenly. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But not right now. Yes. Thank you very much. That was it for me. I will connect to the rest. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. This is not <laughs> the time for that particular event. That is a ways in the future. And it will be something that will be experienced at this point that it has not changed in your future but it can change with certain activities continue okay thank you very much elijah uh, the next person that we have is l she Hello. can ask a question Hello. Hello. hello it's it's elena oh elena go uh, ahead elena. hello elijah um i would uh, like to ask you a similar question who are the beings yes. clo closer to me right now closest who's the being closest to you yes there actually are a couple beings clo very close to you One moment. I know God is very close to you right now as well. But yes. there are other beings around you that you are aware of. And they will Should not we... let you say their names, but okay. you are close to God right now. You are close to God right now as well. But I know, did you say Ish? 
Um, Ish, well, I, I didn't, I haven't seen him for a while. I didn't think so. I heard that name, but I, it wasn't something that seemed right. But um, you are very close to God right now, and the other beings will not tell me their names at the moment. But that is all right. I don't not do yeah. not need to know them. <clears throat> no problem. Yeah. Uh, I I started working with uh, with some people in my country recently that uh, that have a spaceship over my country and are doing some healing and uh, operations. And um, they have a, a station and a laser that that is on the mountain in my city. Um, they say they are from Sirius, but um, a lot of beings are there as well that are from another other planet. Um, can we put some uh, some information in this? The the Syrians are here on your planet. They are the only species that are allowed to actually set foot on your planet at this moment, and they were. <clears throat> in the Antarctic area. They have given them permission to also set down on a couple of these different mountain uh, sites. But the beings that are around them are holographic and are not allowed to set foot on the planet. Only Syrians now are allowed to be on your planet. And only for a very particular reason, and that is to help the Earth. And that is the only reason why they were given permission, is because they have a kind of help for the planet that is necessary for it to survive. So, yes, they are there at some places, but only working for one purpose. To help. Yes, and um, it is very, very specific. Yes, because uh, the plan, uh, the plan is to create a church and or a temple, so to say, a Babylon temple that combines all religions together, and uh, the water that is going to to come from the earth at the moment when the temple, because there is a hidden hidden generator in the ground. Yes. So the water that's going to come out is going to heal cancer, um, HIV, and other unhealable diseases in commons. It will transmute the diseases. What mm -hmm. is going to happen is the vibration of this particular essence, which we'll call water, is going to have vibrations that will... Um, grab a hold of these particular kinds of viruses, bacterias, and germs, and remove them from the body. Mm -hmm. Instantly. Yes, Almost. well, it, it would appear to be instantly. It will grab a hold of them instantly, but you must pass them through the body for them to be actually out of the system. But they will grab a hold of these particular viruses and bacterias instantly when you put them in the body. Now, you may have to drink more of what you call this water to get all of it out, but it will take care of it. Yes. Um, I, I, I hope um, and I will help to happen in this lifetime, in this yes. lifespan that we have, and I'm very optimistic. I see that it is not yet ready for the people yet, but I I'll, see I'll, what, yes, yes, but I there see. are good amount of people that are um, preparing for this. Yes, I see that. So they can just be like protectors of the ground, so to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Do you have time for one more question, Elijah? Yes, if, if that is necessary, I will answer another question. Okay, um, we have Pete. Uh, he has a question for you. Pete, greetings. Greetings, Elijah. 
Continue. We can't barely hear you, so please get up close to your I mic. I cannot hear him at all. Okay. Let me Hello. see. Turn your volume up. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're soft. Oh, okay. Um, how about now? A little better. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Eli Hi, Elijah. It's good to see. Good to meet with you. And I would like to ask only two questions. Yes. Um, my first question is: Is that recently I've been feeling off within myself um, for some particular reason due to some. Um, some solar flares or which are some events. Um, and, so, and right now, recently, I've been feeling some downness within myself. I was wondering what is the, what is happening in a sense at that moment? If, if you had heard my message today, I'm not sure if you did, but there is a lot of this being experienced right now where you feel disconnected from the light, disconnected from positivity, and disconnected from um, all the things that seem to be moving in a positive direction. Is that how you feel? Yes. It is. I will go into more depth because I didn't really explain what was happening, but I explained what, how to get out of it a little bit. But... There are solar flares. There's a lot of things coming from the center of the galaxy. Some uh, call it one thing, some call it another. There are timeline interruptions. There is alignments in the solar system also happening. And the Earth energies after this last solstice have calmed down some but have changed. So with all these different things happening at once, it does tend to take the fire out of one's essence. It tends to cause a lot of uh, energy to be a very low. So do not, do not worry. Your energy will return. Positivity will return. But believe that God is with you and that that you are all right because it is what it is at this time and it will move forward uh, bring the law of attraction to you bring the thoughts of positivity into your realm because it is the only thing that uh, can help right at the moment. I understand how so many have lost hope at this time. There are so many things that look very negative in the world. But fear not. You're not on a negative path. You are on a good journey. And I can see by your icon there's a great number of positive symbols that are being represented there for you and are telling you about yourself in many ways and about your past, present, and future. So hold on to this. This beautiful icon tells you that there is great beauty still to come. I'm a little tearing up right now. Um, I cannot hear you. I'm a little tearing up right now. Is it a good thing? A positive thing. Excellent. Find your road again because you haven't really left it. It's still right there in front of you. It's just everything looks so dark right now that the light seems a little dimmer than usual. But it will come back into its brightness. Be, you are a person of the light, and you have a mission. 
and I see part of it in this great icon that you have chosen. It relates to who you are in many senses and the ethereal parts of your pro thought processes and how you relate to the earth as a spiritual place. Thank you, Elijah. You're welcome. My next question, my last question before I go is, is that I've been, I've been making, have I been making any progress in connecting to my crystal grid that I have created? Yes, um, you have. Let me tell you about, um, hold on one moment. Oh, yes. Although you may not feel the connection strongly right at the moment, there are three stones. The stone at 12 o'clock and the, st the stone at 4 o'clock and the stone at 9 o'clock are giving you great energy. And Do you understand? Yes. And... Is my is my Moldavite gem that stone that I wear? Is does it help help me? It is helping you to connect to the grid. Keep it on. Um, it is interacting with the stones that are there. But what is greater about that piece of Moldavite is it's connecting to your star family and your star system and your, your ethereal out, outside world thoughts, not only is it connecting to the grid, but it's connected to your spiritual life as well in many ways. This will help you to realize that there's some energy working for you very soon. In fact, the next time that you go to the grid it's close by isn't it yes the next time you actually work the grid you will feel the energy in a different way than you have before well thank you elijah for answering both of my questions it's you're welcome very cal it's been very calming Good, I am glad you are calm, because a lot of people on this planet right now are not, and they need to be. They need to calm into their understanding that everything will be all right, and they must move forward in their missions, because when there is a great deal of disruption like there is now, it is hard for them to do what they need to do, and be the example that they need to be. But calm yourselves and move forward. There are some in this room that need to be calm and move forward because you understand that the reasons why you are feeling the things that you are feeling is because they are trying to destroy all your energy. Thank you, Elijah, for this assistance. Much love to you. There is someone that else wants to come very quickly, if I may let them. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elijah, and blessings to you, and thank you for that lovely message. Many blessings to all of you, and you are all in my prayers. Prayer is a very powerful, powerful means of communication with God. And it connects you with all those that believe the same as you do, and even those that do not. But it is a great connector. So continue to pray. 
and bring love to one another. Thank you. Yes. I'm seeing someone saying they're having attack dreams. Dreams of attack. Mm -hmm. Many people are having these because they are being attacked by negativity. Pray. Lift yourself up. I will go now. Blessings to you all. Blessings, Elijah.